Hello YouTube and welcome back to my channel. I apologize ahead of time for the background noise. My wife's mowing the lawn while I'm working on the vehicles. And today, I'm gonna, this is going to be kind of like a companion or follow up video to the video where I put the skid plates on the front and rear differentials and that they developed a leak. Now, I'm not sure whether it's because of the button head bolts with the Allen head and then I wasn't able to get them torqued down tight enough or whether it's the fact that I mean, as I was working on it, I disturbed the factory seal. So what we're going to do today is we're going to drain the differential fluid. I mean, we're going to take and replace the button head bolts with grade 8 I mean, just regular hex heads and we're going to reseal the diffs. Now I've already done the front about a week ago which you know I didn't film that one because that one's a bit of a bugger it took a little longer than expected but I'm going to film doing the rear diff which is the same process as the front it's just that on the front you have to work around with your steering components which makes it a little bit more difficult now for the project today what I'm going to use is I have went and bought grade 8 bolts I needed 5 front and 5 rear to replace the butt heads these are 5 sixteenths by 18 by 3 quarters. They're a half inch and a head to them. So these will go in. They're slightly longer than the factory hardware. So that will compensate for the added thickness of the skid plate. So I will need an Allen key set to take out the button head ball. I have a half inch. I have, I always call it medium drive, but I think it's half inch drive. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to ratchet. Now you'll need this to take the plugs out I'm gonna, for the drain and fill for your differentials. Of course I have a short and medium extension and I have a tube of RTV. Now I'll, this will be used for making the gasket. I've not purchased any I mean, uh, gaskets because this is your gasket maker. There, there's no gasket on it from the factory. I know you can purchase gaskets, but to be honest with you, you're throwing money away doing that. Just a good bead of this is all you need. So we will take and get underneath the Jeep and we'll start taking the skid plate off and start getting things disassembled. Okay, so here we are under the Jeep. I apologize if the video is a little shaky. The tripod doesn't go small enough to get under here. So we're going to start by taking out all these small button head bolts to get the rear diff skid plate took off. And then once we have that out of the way, we will slide our catch pan underneath and we will drain the differential oil out. See you in a bit. Okay, so after digging around a little bit, I couldn't find the drain plug, so we decided to go with plan B for how to drain the differential. Basically, you take all of your bolts out except for your top one. Leave the top one in, but loosen it. That way your um, uh, differential doesn't fall down. And then with all your bolts loose or out and the top one loose you can then take a screwdriver or scraper tool and work it up between your differential and your differential cover to break the seal at the bottom and let all your old differential fluid drain out so we're going to stop the video and I'll get that once that's done draining I'll take the final bolt out and we'll have the differential cover off and we can start cleaning things up and getting things prepped to reseal it, put it back together and fill it back full of new differential fluid. Okay, so we have the differential cover off. So now what we need to do is clean our mating surface. Now I like to start with my scraper tool and just go through get as much of the old gasket material off as possible 
the more you're able to scrape off the easier the next step will be which involves a little bit of a, a little bit of power tools and that I like to take a wire brush and a drill because that is going to really uh, scrub it down to you know good metal get all the gunk and junk off but it's important to scrape as much as you can of all this old gas material and just get it all as much scraped off as it will come off because the more you can get off the less it's going to gunk up the wire brush and the easier it's going to be so and then we'll do the same thing uh, to the housing being careful not to let any of the junk fall into the housing and get into the into where it's going to contaminate our new gear oil but this is the not so glorious part is all the cleanup prep but this is absolutely crucial because the cleaner you can get this the better seal you're going to get so we've got most of that scraped off so we'll cut the video off I'll shimmy back iron the Jeep get that cleaned up and then it's time to break out the power tools okay so with everything cleaned up we went ahead and cleaned all the gunk off of it you can see where the paint is peeling and chipping and a little bit of rust coming through so I figure since colloquially they're called the pumpkin I would paint them pumpkin orange now this is not going to be a really pretty job of it doesn't have to be it's under the Jeep nobody's really going to see it but by giving them a good shot of paint probably about three layers that's going to extend the life of this part and keep it from rusting out and keep it protected so I'm not going to bore you watching paint dry so I'll get all this painted up and then we will start the reassembly process okay so we're back we have everything nice and cleaned up well, as clean as we can possibly get so then we're going to take our gasket maker which if you buy it new it comes with a nice little top that you can cut I used it and after you use it once if you don't use the whole tube and you put the thing back on put your normal cap back on it you're not going to be able to use the nozzle anymore because it's going to set up in it but you just basically take your gasket maker which don't tell me it's set up on me I have to it might have set up on me in the tube I got another I got another tube around here but yeah that's set up in the tube oh <laughs> I think that might have been my old tube of it from when I had the Dakota but anyways I have my gasket maker and what you want to do is put you just a good bead make sure you circle around your bolt holes but which that might be a little bit thick but just to kind of give you an idea I'm going to spread that out just a tad but it's a little harder to do without the thing but just a good healthy bead like that around your entire surface I generally like to put it around it let it set for probably about 10-15 minutes and then I start then I'll take the differential cover and I'll put it on get get it started and lined up get all my bolts in and then I'll take and start torquing things down 
So I'm going to finish this up. It's a little hard to do one-handed. And we'll let it set for about 10, 15, and then I'll come back. I'll probably have the differential cover just lined up with the bolt started. And we'll see you in a bit. Okay, and we're back. I used the top five bolts just to kind of locate the differential cover onto the um, uh, differential housing. Now, I don't know if you've ever worked with the RTV stuff before, but it's extremely tacky. So, once you get it on there, it just kind of sticks to it and wants to hold it there, so it's not that hard to hold and line it up. Um, just a quick trick, if you're having trouble getting your bolt holes lined up or getting them found, you can take a thin um, uh, screwdriver and kind of stick through to locate your bolt hole. On the front, I ended up having to use a thin screwdriver to locate and kind of hold the differential cover in place while I lined up I'm a, the bolt from one side. But, a, and I apologize again for the noise, but you know, this is real life, not a movie. The yard has to be mowed and things like that, so. But we have the top five bolts just finger tight. So now we're going to take and reinstall our skid plate using our new grade 8 bolts so the same procedure for locating the um, uh, differential skid take and just kind of set it up get the bolt started and just keep getting the bolt started till you get all five of them in and then run them up finger tight so we will get that done and we'll talk to you in a little bit okay we're back we have the rear skid or differential skid in place. All the bolts are just kind of ran up finger tight. Don't want to, I'm a, right now your gasket maker is still fairly fluid so you don't want to squish all of it out. So what we'll do is we'll just give this a few minutes with it in with your mating surfaces in contact like it is. We'll give it probably about 10 minutes. Let that set up a little more and then we'll come back and we'll torque our bolts down. Okay, so we're back one final time. We have it filled up with the required amount of gear lube. I did manage to find an old bottle that had a little bit left in it and just a short piece of rubber hose. Filled it up out of my big ball that I bought for this particular job and was able to take and put the hose on top of the bottle and turn it sideways and squeeze which greatly sped up the fill procedure. The turkey baster works but it's very very slow and tiresome. But we've got it filled back up. We've got the drain plug back in. One thing I do want to note on most of your drain plugs for things like differentials and transmissions and possibly transfer cases, I'm not entirely sure on that one, is that most of them tend to be magnetic on one end. So whenever you take a drain and fill plug out, just look at it, check it, wipe it off. And the, the amount of metal shavings compared to the, and the mileage on the vehicle can kind of give you an idea as to, you know, what condition it, the internals are in as far as wear. You know, excessive amounts of metal, you know, it's usually a bad sign, but, you know, expect there to be at least a, you know, an appropriate amount because parts do wear over time. But you want to make sure you take and clean that before you reinstall it because that's kind of like the filter to keep all the little metal bits from just floating around in the oil. They eventually get collected on, on your plugs most of the time. Um... As to knowing when it's full, it's usually very simple. Now, if you have like an aftermarket differential cover that's, you know, extra capacity, you know, it may be a little different. Follow the, the instructions that came with it usually. But generally on a differential, when you're, um, uh, to if you go to check it or you're filling it, you fill it up to the bottom of your um, uh, field plug whether it be a thread in or just push in. Generally, um, uh, if, as long as you're, you know, roughly at the bottom of the plug, you're okay as far as fluid levels. If you're filling it, fill it, I like to fill it till it starts draining back out. That way I know 
it is full. So then, you know, I'll fill it till it starts to drain out. Then I'll put the plug back in it, and away I go. So I want to thank everyone for watching. A like is I'm a, a, a that can't talk speak plain for splutter sometimes. A like would greatly be appreciated. If you enjoyed this video, check out some of my other ones. Feel free to subscribe to I'm a, that way you can find me again and see when I post. And thank everyone for watching.